What's up, everybody? This is John Raymond coming to you from the workshop. And today we're going to start a two video series where we're going to get in depth with how to practice scales and actually have fun doing it. I find that a lot of people, when they think about scales, scales tend to be something that are boring and monotonous and kind of done by rote and aren't very engaging to do. And while they certainly build technique on your instrument, I think we can be working on them in ways that are a little more engaging, as well as that work that improvisational muscle that we use when we're playing music and improvising, we can be working on scales in a kind of way that exercises that muscle as well. So we're gonna split things up into two parts, we'll get to part one in this video and part two in the next video. So let's dive in. So when a lot of people start to work on scales, they'll really just play them ascending, descending, and that's kind of it. Right, And while this can certainly develop some good things, especially range on your instrument and that sort of thing, what we really want to do is be developing vocabulary as we work on these scales, things that we can actually use when we're improvising. Right, And just like when we think about language and we think about what vocabulary is with that, all that words are are you know a handful of letters in a certain order that are put together to make those words, right? Or phrases are really just certain words put together. And in the same way, for us, using some very small little shapes or patterns or cells of notes can help get us more language as we're playing over scales. And I actually would venture a guess to say that if you actually work on scales in this way, you're gonna internalize them a lot faster and a lot deeper as well. So let's get into two different kinds of patterns or cells or groups of notes that we can start to use when we're practicing scales. And then I'm gonna give you a way to go about using them that's really engaging and is really gonna work that improvisational muscle. First, let's just start with intervals, right? You can get a lot of mileage out of playing scales in various different intervals, whether that be thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, octaves, ninth, etc. right? There's a lot you can do with these kinds of things. So pick one interval and what I want you to do is improvise over a certain scale that you're working on. Pick any key and what you can do with this is you can only use this interval while improvising melodies, right? So it's going to restrict you on one hand to playing only this one thing that we're focused on but it gives you freedom on the other hand to be spontaneous and to create and hear melodies with this certain cell of notes and in this case our interval right so i'm going to demonstrate this first by playing in the key of c concert and i'm going to just take the interval of a fifth and i'm going to try to improvise some melodies freely that have this interval in any way that i hear it So as you can see in here, there's a lot that you can do with just one interval, right? I have a choice every moment as I'm improvising and creating new melodies with this interval of what to do with it, right? I have to choose the direction I'm gonna go. I have to choose the rhythm 
that I play it in. I might even repeat certain notes right, at certain times. Might play faster, might play slower. All of these different kinds of things are going to help you internalize the sound and the technique of this scale, but in a very improvised way. Now, second, what we can also do is take a different kind of cell or group of notes and improvise like we did with intervals with this very specific parameter of using only that cell or group of notes to play with. So this could really be any kind of scale pattern or pattern that you would play through the scale like one, two, three, or one, three, two, one, or one, three, five, or one, three, five, seven, or three, one, three, five, or, you know, you get the idea. You can go really deep with this kind of thing and really choose any different kind of scale pattern or cell of notes that you want. Take that one pattern and now improvise with that. Again, only exclusively using that pattern. You have to really focus on not doing anything else so that you can exercise this muscle of using that specific pattern in your own way. So I'm going to do that here again with playing over C major concert with just the cell of notes 1, 3, 5. And I'm going to see how many different things I can do with it and where my ear takes me as I improvise with that pattern. Now, as you practice scales in this way, I think you'll find that it's a lot more engaging and it works that improvisational muscle that we use when we're improvising, right? What's important though is as you're doing these on your own, you still wanna be concerned with the technical part of it, right? You wanna be concerned with flow, making sure all the notes are even and flowing together and things don't feel interrupted or um, you know, hesitating in any way. You also want to work on clarity, right? You want all the notes that you play as you're improvising with these different parameters or groups of notes, you want them to be clear, even, right? So that every note resonates in the same way. You also want to practice playing with really good time, right? Now this doesn't mean you actually necessarily even need to play in time. You can play rubato or, or very slowly but you should always be playing with conscious rhythm, right? That is really crucial. And especially if you wanna play these with a metronome or drum genius or something like that, that's gonna help you work on your time in addition to working on improvising in this scale. And last but not least, what you're inherently working on with all of this is you're working on fluency in all the keys, right? You shouldn't just do this with one or two keys. You should eventually be working through this with all 12 keys so that you have the same amount of dexterity and facility in your most comfortable key as you do your least comfortable key. That's what's gonna help you develop even more facility working on scales in this way. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. I think it's a much more fun and engaging way to practice scales. We're gonna get into some other stuff in the next video in part two we're going to talk about some more practical applications of what you can do with these scales in the practice room by yourself to help them start to apply in musical contexts and situations. So thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave me any questions or comments if you've got any. And we'll see you guys next time.